Hi folks, this is the County Line Gardener with you. Hey, uh, today I don't have a whole lot going on sitting there on the back porch. Thought I'd uh, run over something with you here. Uh, my tomatoes. Uh, as you probably all know, tomatoes are my all, all time. If, if that's the only thing I'd grow if, if I could. Uh, I mean, I can, but, you know, if, if I had to grow one item in the garden, it'd be tomatoes. And we have had, uh, we have had as, <laughs> we've had as many as 300 tomato plants in our garden over the, at one, one summer. Next year it was 250. We're up there almost 70 years old now. I am 70. My wife's 66, I think. Um. We're just too old to, to, to do that, to deal with it. Putting them in the ground is the hard part. The plants, that's a lot, a lot of tomato plants. So we, we cut it way back. I think this year uh, we had 36 tomato plants in the garden. And we had about 100 over here in the raised beds over here to, to my uh, left. And... Uh, I'll be honest with you, we we filled those, uh, we got nine 16 foot by 3 foot wide by 2 foot tall raised beds. And uh, they're, we filled them all full of compost we bought at the local uh, mulch store. And they're, oh, they're just great. The, the tomatoes grew great in there. Uh, they grew better than the ones in the garden. Um, I, I don't know why exactly. We, we, we fed them all and watered them all the same. But uh, anyway, I wanted to go over my favorite tomatoes uh, for what it's worth. Uh, I, I don't, I, it's hard for me to pinpoint one particular tomato I like. I like red tomatoes. I like yellow tomatoes. I like cherry tomatoes, and I like pasted tomatoes. I like them all. I like hybrids. I like hybrids, and I like uh, excuse me, oh, uh, uh, heirlooms. I like them all. Like them all. They all grow good here. We got real good soil here. Real good pH in the ground. Uh, uh, lime is just fine. We're gonna re, re we're gonna throw lime on the field this this fall but anyway uh, I kind of went through here and picking out what tomatoes I want for next year and uh, if I had to pick one favorite tomato out of all of them out of all the tomatoes I've grown over the year and I've grown I have grown I've got a list here 99 different tomatoes I've grown each year I'll grow a couple of new ones and if I like them I keep them and I throw out a couple but anyway uh, I've got two filing cabinets here little plastic filing cabinets full of seeds uh, but uh, once we grow the most we we grow new seeds every year but uh, red delicious some people just call it delicious I that my biggest tomato ever was a Red Delicious. And Red Delicious had the uh, world record tomato, seven pounds and something for several years. Uh, it got beat finally, but uh, I love them. I love them. I plant them every year. I'll just go down the list of what I got wrote down. Uh, super steak. It seems to me like anything that, that ends with steak on it, like beef steak. Uh, th those are all favorites of mine. Super steak, supersonic is a good one. Now here's one we've we've had the last two years a lot of. We do a lot of canning, an awful lot of canning. Uh, tomato soup, tomato whole tomatoes, tomato juice, you name it. Uh, uh, spaghetti sauce, we make it all. Most of it from scratch. Salsa. I got I got enough salsa in there to last me two years. 
But anyway, one I like the most for that kind of stuff is Amish paste. I just, you can't go wrong with them. Uh, they're, they're a mid, I'll call mid-size, mid-size uh, tomato. They're a little oblong, but the thing I like the most about them is the, uh, the stem end. There's hardly any core, and they're, like I said, they're oblong. They're about three inches long, maybe four. Uh, if you're lucky there's a lot of them on each plant and they just peel so easy we uh, we core them and keep them usually keep them overnight cored and then the next day we X we put an X on the bottom of the skin on the bottom and the next day we blanch them for about three minutes two minutes get the skin warm and the skin just just falls off just falls off. It's just great. Just great. And they're really good, too. There are not too many seeds in them. Amish paste. Uh, another good tomato I like to grow. It, it's a cherry tomato. Actually, the next three are. Um, the Super Sweet 100s. They, they go, it goes, goes without saying. They're just, they're proficient. There's so many, so many hundreds on a plant. They're all they're delicious. They're just the right size for salads and things like that, and just popping in your mouth, which is the way I do. I set them out here in a pot on each on one corner of the greenhouse, and when I go by on the lawnmower, I just grab me a handful and keep going. On the other corner of the greenhouse, I keep one called a a sun sugar. And in different places, it's called different things, but it's basically the same tomato uh, called sun sugar. It's a sweet, uh, about the sweetest tomato we have. It's yellow, absolutely delicious, and it's usually, it's usually, if we planted them all at the same time, it's usually the first one that blooms, the first one we get a, a ripe tomato off of. And uh, now let's just keep on going here. I got a big long list here. I like a mana orange. A lot of people don't, but I do. I like a mana orange and the Kellogg orange beef steak. Here we are with that beef steak again. I love I love any beef steak tomato. Uh, we're getting into some here that are hybrids, which you know for a long time I didn't use hybrids as old fashioned or, or whatever, but I found. The, the you don't they don't catch any diseases or anything like that and they're very very good tomato very good tasting tomato I don't save the seeds anyway you can't save a hybrid seed because you never know what you're going to get the next year but I, I never save them anyway anyway uh, brandy master red or brandy master yellow now here's one that's not a hybrid, but it is in the brandy family, the brandy wine. That this tomato goes back a couple hundred years probably. But uh, I like the red and the yellow both. Uh, they're good tomato, except brandy wines. You don't seem to get a whole lot of them on the on the on the plant. You might be you might be lucky to get six nice sized tomatoes off of one plant which I'm used to getting 20 or more you know on these but that's okay uh, I can walk in a garden and tell you which one is the brandy wine because of the leaves the leaves are totally different than a regular tomato that just they look more like a potato leaf they don't look at all like a, t a tomato leaf they look like a potato leaf uh, we'll, we'll touch on that too potatoes and things that in a minute uh, keep on going here. Probably my favorite yellow tomato would be a golden Carolina gold. I know what you're going to think. There's there's a dozen names for this tomato. Carolina gold, mountain gold. Uh, I heard the golden jubilee was. They're all three the same tomato. I don't know, but all I know is I like them, and I always order golden jubilee. I had a tomato years ago 
probably 12, 13 years ago called a Hedge German. H-E-G-E. -E. I can't find seeds for it anymore. Nowhere. Nowhere. Nobody has Hedge German seeds. If you find them, text me or let me know down below and tell me I'd love to grow them. They are so meaty. Uh, very few seeds. Uh, another hybrid yellow one is the Lemon Boy. I love Lemon Boys. Uh, Lemon Boy, Sunny Boy. You know, there's three or four different things I go, I look for in a tomato. is the taste to begin with. Size. I like them, uh, you know, palm size. Maybe a little bigger. I don't know. It doesn't matter. The amount you get off of one plant is, is a big thing. And uh, how, how easy is it to grow? Is it uh, susceptible to blight and, and other things? You know, it, it, we've had times here in the last three or four summers where we've had to, we've had to actually water that garden up there behind, behind the camera there. That's, it's big. It's a two-acre garden. That's big. It's one, 150 long. No, it's 150. 125 wide. 350 long. We cut that in half this year. We cut that down to half, and I'm mowing the rest of it for grass. But uh, after we grew our onions this year, I had an empty raised bed out there. It was just killing me. I usually stick something in it. Usually, I don't know, turnips or something like that. Uh, this year, I had a few pumpkin plants, and my wife likes pumpkins. I don't care for them, but I stuck them in there, and you ought to see. I got I got a pumpkin down there. I know it's 50 pounds right now, and it's not even orange yet. It's going to really go. Had peppers. Peppers still growing in the other one. Peppers will grow until it frost. I've never seen anything like it. They may even grow after the frost. I don't know. But I hate to pull them up because they're still growing. Our strawberries are over there. We got one... One box bed, one raised bed here, still with tomatoes in it. Uh, it's funny. This is a little funny, but the early girls are the ones that haven't ripened yet. <laughs> I just I don't understand that, but I, that early business is just that. It's just, it's. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Uh, they're no earlier than any of the others. Uh, and we... Uh, I just go down through here. Uh, well, that's my my list of tomatoes that I like. I got, like I said, I got a list here of of of, uh, of 99 actually. I can go through them real fast. Abe Lincoln, Amanda Orange, Amish Pace, Arkansas Traveler, Atkinson, Azoiki, Banana Lake, Beef Master, Beef Steak. I could go on and on and on. Uh, I try them. I don't like them. I don't. I don't plant them the next year. The ones you see me plant are the ones that over the years have done me the best. And right now, my bragging is on the, the Amish paste. Perfect, perfect tomato, especially for canning. As soon as I get done with this video, I'll put it online. I'm going to go out to, I've got three refrigerators in my shop. We keep our produce in. Uh, and i got three big freezer bags of tomatoes out there. They've already been cored and axed and we're gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I want to make some tomato juice, maybe one or two quarts, however much, you know, 14 pounds will make. Uh, my wife's gone, she's at a, a festival. This is festival time for her and my daughters, so they, they get together and go to festivals every Saturday, which is okay, that's fine with me. Uh, I, uh, it, uh, let me just run down the favorites of everything I grow. You can go by that or you can go by whatever you want. Um, I used to grow, I grew, what were them called? Uh, Cherokee Purple one year. Well, they grew good. Pretty good sized tomato. Maybe, maybe a pound, maybe not quite a pound, but they were nice tomatoes. They were almost black. 
and I've heard so many people brag on the taste, and they were they were good. I just I didn't I don't like them. I don't like the looks of them. To me, tomatoes are supposed to be red or yellow or pink. That's another thing. I don't I don't eat pink tomatoes. I just don't. I don't know why, but I've grown a lot of them over the years. But uh, I just stick with the red and the yellow. Uh, and as far as processing goes, you can't, you know, as well as I do, you can't hardly, hardly boil and peel a yellow tomato. They just fall apart. So uh, I don't, I don't grow too many yellow ones anymore. I do to eat because they are good. Out of uh, 145 plants I grew this year, I probably didn't have over six or seven yellow tomatoes. But man, they were good. They were good. Our corn didn't do with a hoot this year. But back to the favorites. My, the corn I use, I probably told you this, is incredible. That's what it's called, incredible. Now, up until this year, I'd always bought it off a local uh, place here in, here in, here in uh, southern Indiana. Well, I ordered these seeds, I, I, these incredible corn seeds I got this year. And they weren't coated with the red, I don't know what that's for. I think it deters uh, crows and things from eating it and stuff. And a disease, you know, free, but it wasn't, it didn't have that coating on it. I don't know if that's what it was or what, but I didn't. My corn didn't grow worth a hoot. We got a few ears off of it, and they weren't very big. But uh, we grew a little bit of Indian corn. Uh, it didn't turn out very well either. Well, so we'll move it. We're going to move it to this this end of the garden. But anyway, uh, let's keep going. Green beans was probably our best, absolutely best thing we grew in the garden this year. We grew eight rows of Jade 2. Jade 2. They're, the, they're a little more pricier than the other seeds, but they're so much better. Great big dark green long things, and there are so many on a vine. We tried, one year we tried Strike green beans guy online on YouTube and recommended them I tried they were they were good but they couldn't compare to the jade and we've had so many people buy our green beans this summer that they just bragged and bragged about the taste of them they are just absolutely delicious uh, we have went through the tomatoes uh, that's about all I can think of blackberries <laughs> I don't. I bet we've sowed 50 gallon, 50 gallon blackberries this year, if not more, if not more. And they're still blooming. There's probably still two gallon down there on on two of them. Them daggone uh, uh, Primark Freedoms and Primark Travelers. That's the name of the bush, the berry. They're so good. They come out twice a year. We can't keep up with it. My wife give up on them. She she's the one who picks most of the berries, but. Uh, got to get them before the birds do so we pick them every morning as fast as we can and uh, well that's about it I just wanted to run this by you on the tomatoes fla uh, favorites I, I got I got a lot of them big beef uh, I like bush plants little shorter bush plants they don't seem to put out as many tomatoes but they're, they're, they're I like the I like the compact size of them I wish I could put compost that I get from the, the dealer, from the compost dealer. I'd love to have that in my garden. You talk about, wow, it's hard to tell what it would look like up there. Another thing about growing in these raised beds, which is what we're going to end up doing, and probably not even have a garden up there anymore because we're getting so older, no weeds absolutely no weeds we put marigold flowers in each box no bugs no bugs whatsoever another thing I think that helped our green beans grow we waited till June 11th I think it was June 11th before we planted them 
we had planted them early, but they just didn't take off like I wanted. So I tilled them up and replanted them or waited till June the 11th and replanted them. I've got a ton of tomatoes here. I've got seeds for that I'm not trying, that I don't try anymore. Comstock, Country Taste, DeBarro. DeBarro, that's a weird looking long banana shaped red tomato. It's a paste tomato. Uh, Dixie Giant Gold uh, Dixie Red Beef Steak. Fantastic Florida 47. I could go on and on here. here here's two tomatoes I forgot to list on here that are good. I like. Uh, they go in my garden every year. It's called Jet Star and Jet Setter. Those two, Jet Star and Jet Sitter. I better write them down. But anyway, uh, they do well. They do well. They're very good for canning. But you let you just can't beat the Amish paste for canning. I, 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 we're going to have. We had one box of Amish paste this year. Next year we're going to have three. And uh, they'll go to crazy in that compost. But uh, folks, I'm going to get off of here. I've talked long enough. Uh, leave me some comments. Let me let me know your favorite tomatoes. It'd be interesting to read some of them, and uh, I might just put a whole list underneath my uh, my next video or so of all the tomatoes I've tried. There's 99 of them, so beware. There's going to be a lot, uh, awful lot of them. Oh, I could go on and on and on. Got a lot of Russian tomatoes. Not a lot, but several. Russian, uh, Italian, Heinz 1370. You know, obviously that was made by the company, but uh, I heard a, I read an article on the internet last week. A guy that owned, I don't know, he's in charge of the tomato business in California. And I, they said that California produces something like 80% of the world's tomatoes. Um, they've had a drought last two or three years. I don't know how long, but it's, it's killing them. Their canneries out there are, 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 are dropping. Uh, they're, they're, they're closing, so uh, expect your tomatoes to go up in the stores. So I wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me none. Uh, but uh, we'll ho we'll just hope they get some water out there. So uh, I'll tell you what, I'm going to get off of here for now. I've got uh, a few more baskets and uh, tomato steaks I got to put up, and my uh, my raised beds will be done. So uh, I'll talk to you later. This is County Line Gardener. Bye bye.